Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you are, of course, watching the only, the only, see, I told you we can't say only, we gotta say first, because we don't know if it's the only, but the first live daily Facebook show about photography on Facebook. One of these days, I'll get that flow really smooth, but until then, you're along for the ride. So, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, facebook.com slash photo Joseph, and today's photo moment is about this guy here. Now, the photo moment that I did a few days ago for the um, little sling belt dicky what's it thing, that was sent to me by the company. They asked me to review that. This was not. This is something I bought with my own money. This is something that I purchased because I've been in the market for a video tripod. I've rented them in the past, but I never owned a tripod with a video head on it. And it's something that I need. And a good video tripod can cost thousands of dollars, literally. So it's not the kind of thing you just go, oh, just go buy one. Uh, this came on the market brand new. This showed up in my inbox. Brand new product from Manfrotto. It is a travel video tripod. And I thought, you know, that would be a great start. It was relatively inexpensive. It was a few hundred bucks versus the thousand and up that you'll get on the bigger ones. And it's Manfrotto, which is a brand that I absolutely love. Got a lot of Manfrotto gear around. See my Super Boom. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it in the shop. My Super Boom is Manfrotto. The tripod that this is, rig is on right now is Manfrotto. Um, I've got a lot of Manfrotto pieces. Love their gear. Very, very good quality. Has never failed me. So this is the new video kit tripod, and I thought I'm gonna wait until I can do this on air to get this thing out of the box. So let's see what this guy is like. Hello, Tadas. Good to see you there. As always, people, if you're watching live, say hello. Shout out any questions you might have. Love to hear from you. Ooh, it comes in a bag. It comes in a travel case. Sweet. Bonus. Let's see. Let's put that there so you can see what that's supposed to look like. That's nice. That is really compact. This is going to fit in my suitcase, which is a key part of a travel tripod. I think. I think. All right. So what else we got in here? Let's get this out. And there's a manual that comes with. Oh, there's a big tripod plate in there. Okay. So let's see if we're going to need that or if that's a backup. And it's supposed to be kind of ready to go out of the box. So let's just see. Oh yeah, that would be the plate for it, okay. And it does appear to be ready to go out of the box. All right, let's just get this thing set up. Drop that down. Um, oh, this is cool. Okay, so there's, I don't know how well you can see this from there, but there's three little positions, three little locking positions for the legs. So the first position here is what allows it to fold up and collapse. This middle position is kind of a normal tripod uh, spread on the legs. And this last one, it's gonna spread wider, so if you wanna get it lower, I like that. So I'll just go for the middle position on there. Let's do that on all of these. Middle, middle, and middle. Okay, so that's, oops, that one's not in the middle. So I'm feeling like it could be a little fumbly if you're really in a hurry to get it in that middle position. But it works, okay? So that's in, let's drop the legs. We're gonna go for full height here to see what this can do. Obviously very lightweight tripod. Weight is usually, well weight does turn into stability. So heavy tripods are more stable. It's just the nature of the beast. One of the things that you can usually do with a tripod and I see this one has it as well. There's a hook on the bottom, and this hook is designed to hang something heavy to add stability to it. So if your tripod is feeling a little bit wobbly, you can hang your camera bag there or anything else, but if you're out in the field, camera bag is something you have, you can hang your camera bag from that, and that'll add some stability to it, so that's definitely worth doing. Um, all right, well that's, let's see here. Is this, yep, and I can, I can drop that down. So that's pretty good, I can get it to almost my eye height. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but I'm not the shortest either, so pretty average there. That's good. And all right, let's see here. So we've got nice little rotation motion there. Nice. Yeah, that's feeling pretty good. So let's see, what is this? This is a, okay, that would be the tension knob. Oh yeah, slighten that tent or loosen the tension knob and that's gonna move around quite nicely. Tighten that up. Good, yep, like that. And this is probably a lock. Let's see, no, that's not a lock. Oh, you know, that is. That's a lock there. And there must be a separate lock. I suppose this one, if I tighten that enough, it locks the vertical position, it does. Okay, so that's feeling pretty good. All right, well, let's, uh, wait, what does this do? What does that do? Oh, oh, the ball heady. Okay, 
cool. So you got a little, not called a ball head. What do you call that thing? There's a name for this. Loosen that, and then I can, I have a little bit more freedom of motion in there. Let's get a camera on here. All right. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This is a, this is a nice toy. Tools. And again, for those watching live, if you have any questions, want to see anything specific about the tripod, want to ask me something that you want to know about the tripod, I will figure it out and let you know. But let's do it while we're live. All right, let's see, what have we got in here? There's a couple of little tiny things. I have no idea what that is. Okay, I'll try not to lose that. And then, oh, okay, so that's a quarter to 20 to, um, uh, what is it, 3816, is that right? Uh, yeah, 3816 tripod head adapter. So if you've got a bigger camera with the bigger head, you can use that along with this post. Although, given the max weight on this thing, which I think was eight pounds, if I remember right, it's probably not something you're gonna wanna do. But, hey, what are you gonna do? All right, let's see here. Uh, get this guy in somehow. There we go, find the larger insert hole. All right, good, so that's set up. So this is gonna need a coin to tighten. That is one of those things. Uh, so many camera ma tripod manufacturers make these tri tightening plates, tightening bolts, so that you have to have a coin to tighten them. And I don't know why they insist on that, because whenever you have this, you never have a coin. Now you buy things with my iPhone. I can't use my iPhone to tighten this. I do find that frustrating. I really wish that people would stop doing that and just put thumb tightenable bolts on there. Okay, put this forward the right way. This plate looks like other plates that I have, which is great. So if they're the same size as other plates, well, actually it'd be a Manfrotto plate. The plate that that camera's on right now, I think is the same size as this. So that's great. Very nice to have that. All right, tighten that in with this handy, handy, handy coin. Seriously, Manfrotto, come on, you guys, get with it. And lock that in, lock that on. So as always, these things have quick release plates. So slides off, there's a button on here. Let's see if I can, there's gonna be a button on here to release the tripod plate. So once it slides on, it can't come off. And of course you tighten that in and then just push the button to release it if you want to. Make sure that I'm not missing any comments there. And there we go. A little tripod head, a little video movement. I dig it. Now, one of the things that sets apart a $200 tripod fluid head from a $2,000 or $4,000 head is the smoothness of motion, how, how easily you can tighten it and level it, how just how cleanly you can move the camera around. And this obviously at this price point is not gonna be insanely awesome, but this is doing pretty nicely. Let's get that down a little more because I would usually shoot video at a little bit lower level there. Which that's actually worth pointing out. Um, quite often when you're shooting stills, you may want to get your camera up really high for whatever reason, and having a bigger tripod becomes more important. With video, I find that I'm always shooting at a lower level. And not always, I shouldn't say always, but usually shooting at a lower level. In fact, the camera that you're looking at here, if I go down to here, that's, I'm eye level with the camera now. But we've got it there so that we can go a wide shot and you can see me top to bottom. If the camera was up high, you'd have to be tilting down, which might not be a bad thing, but I think that's not standard. I think this is a little bit more normal to have it at a height like this. So this is feeling pretty good. I like it. I like it. I think this is a good investment. It's a good first smooth video tripod head for me. Oh, I can rotate the handle here, so if for whatever reason I wanna angle that down or something, I can do that. There we go. So if I got it up high and it's just a smoother motion. Digging it. Let's see how low it can get to the ground. Since it's got those wide spreaders, let's do that. So let's collapse these legs. Oh, and let's see the feet themselves. Okay, no spikes on the feet. So yesterday's video tip, if you saw that, about using the uh, the dolly wheels, the furniture moving wheels as a DIY dolly would still work with these because these feet, just the rounded feet would fit into it, but it's not gonna be quite as solid as it was with the tripod with the spike, uh, spikes coming out of the bottom. But that's, uh, that's okay. That is okay. Let's collapse this up. 
And one more. Let's see here if there's any questions coming in. Zoom in, please. Oh, someone's saying zoom in, please. Can you uh, zoom in on? Let's see, I'm gonna let me get this down on the ground, and then I'll give you a moment to zoom in. Thank you, Maurizio. We will uh, we will do that. All right, go ahead and zoom in here. I'm gonna be down here for a while. So, and I am expanding out the legs to their wide position. I want to see just how low we can get it. Oh, that's funny. So the the tripod column is too tall at this point, so we'll have to drop that a little bit. So if I put that just off the ground so that it is not touching, we don't want that touching the ground. It's pretty good. That is pretty good. Obviously, I've seen lower tripods before, but it worked pretty well for a ground shot. I think that'll work out nicely. Let me straighten out this arm again. Yeah, I dig it. Now, one of the things that you can often do with a tripod head, although I can't imagine doing this for video, is invert the head. Let me invert the column. Let me see if you can do that on this tripod. Let's find out. You can leave the shot there. All right, cool. What are you saying? Thanks. Well, you're welcome, buddy. All right, uh, let's see here. So usually that means taking off something off the bottom. Yep, this does unscrew. Super. So this is the hook on the bottom that I referred to. Well, that's made of plastic. I don't like that. I mean, most of this is aluminum. That's a plastic thread. Not too thrilled about that. I do wish that was metal. But now that I've taken that off, the column will come out. There we go. So now you can invert it. Now, again, I really can't imagine doing this on a video tripod. But hey, who knows? Maybe there's a reason for it. So let's do that. So now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to put the camera on there. So let's go. Let's see here. I'm going to bring the head up, bring the legs up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here, the whole point of this, the whole reason you would invert the column is so that you can get the camera extremely low to the ground. So that's going to be. This is, this is an interesting mechanism here. You do have to be aware of where you're positioning it. Ah, you figure it out. It's, it's not a big deal. You just got to be aware of it. That's all. OK, so let's see here. If I was to do this and that, this, it would be a good idea to screw this thing back in at this point so that you can't accidentally drop the camera out completely. If you were to not have this on, it would fall out right now. All right, so let's put this thing back in here. Tighten that up. Probably would get rid of the mic at this point. So now, <laughs> this is fun. So if you're doing some video, super close up, macro, down on the ground, little flower, and you want to have that, still have that tripod stability, that's cool. Now this arm's going to get in the way. I probably could take this off. And actually, if I just do this, it's out of the way. A little bit harder to control, but look at that. There you go. You can do something like that. That's kind of cool. Why not, right? Yeah. Hey, who knows what you're going to do? No one says you can't. That's cool. I like it. I'm digging it. This is a nice little tripod. It is lightweight. I would love to give you a spec. I'll read it. It's probably on the box. I'll give you a spec in just a moment here what it actually weighs. But it is definitely a lightweight tripod. That is for certain put this thing back the way that uh, it was meant to be. And overall, you know, a little bit on the flimsy side, but that's to be expected with a travel tripod. That is just the nature of the beast. Weight is what adds stability to these things. So if you're going to have a really lightweight, small tripod, it's going to be a little bit loose, a little bit wobbly. But that is, again, part of why this thing is here. And that's also part of why I feel like this really should be metal, because it's such an important part of it. I feel like if I was to hang quite a heavy bag on here, it might break the uh, break the hook or break the screws. The threads themselves are plastic. That's that's the part that really bugs me about that. But oh wait, what you're gonna do? All right, let's put this all back together. Um, does it have a bowl for leveling? Sohail is asking. Hey Sohail, so it's it sort of does. Um, let me hear. Let me expand it back out again and show you. It's got a bowl is the right word. Thank you. I was trying to remember what that was earlier. It's I was calling it a ball head, but I know that's not right. So it sort of has a bowl. All 
right, let's just get this up here. All right, can you zoom in tight onto the head here? I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera back on it. So it's got some weight on it. Uh, let me know when you're zoomed in tight. Good, okay. So this right here is a bit of a bowl. If I loosen that, I can level that out. And there is a spirit level in here, so I can get that into position. Oop, lock that in. Oop, I think I just went the wrong way. Let's see here. No, that's, that's, that's loose. That's locked, okay, there we go. So get that leveled out. I'm just looking at that spirit level. As I tighten it, it tends to shift it a little bit. That's a little annoying. So it's not quite, what Sohail is talking about is some, and this is a bowl leveler, that is what it is, but bigger higher end tripods will have a single handle underneath that you loosen and then move it in this bowl to get the camera level. And they're fantastic, but that is definitely a higher end feature. This has it, a collar there that can be loosened and moved. It's just a little tricky, I think, to get that really spot on. And I suppose if I was gonna be really accurate about it, I would need to take this off so I could look straight down on the level. Yeah, that's actually pretty level um, before doing that. So, so there's the answer to your question. So yes, it does have a little bit of a bowl in there. Um, it's a little flimsy, but it does the job. And now you've got it. I, I'd like to point out too that the tension on this is nice. Okay, so there's, this is not the heaviest camera in the world, but again, this is not meant for big, huge, you, know, you wouldn't put your red epic on this. And as I position it, like there it's staying fine, there it's staying fine. There obviously it's falling back, but that's what the tensioner is for. This seems like a good balance. You've got a nice, nice drag, it's nice resistance, which allows for nice smooth movement. I'm feeling a little bump, that's weird. Right there. The tiniest little bump in the move. I wonder what that is. Maybe I tighten that, loosen it just a little. Oh, actually it's this one that I need to loosen. Oh, there we go, now the bump is gone. Okay, so I just had that, that lower ring too tight. So there for a nice pan. Yep, cool. I approve. Let's uh, put it back in the bag, see how easily this thing collapses back into place. So, close up all the legs and loosen or unlatch the, uh, what, I don't know what you'd call that, the collar that's gonna allow the legs to flip upside down. One of the little tips for setting up your tripod quickly is to not, once I collapse these and put it into place, don't bother locking all of these if you can avoid it. Now, we'll see if I can get away with that on this tripod because these pop out. My other travel tripod that's just a regular, um, not a video tripod, it's a regular tripod. It's got the twisting collars and I always leave them loose because that means when I take it up out of the bag, all the legs are loose. I flip it over and all the legs fall out. And so it makes setup a lot quicker. So we're gonna see if I can do that here. I don't know if, uh, if those latches are gonna get in the way. They might, they might be in the way. But we're gonna find out in a second here. feel like I've done something wrong here. Oh, the tripod head was not up all the way. That's, that's what I'm doing wrong. There we go. So, yeah, can't really close it all the way with these latches out. So on this one, you're gonna have to do that. But that said, these are latches, which are a lot quicker. The, my other travel tripod, would you grab it please? It's sitting right over there. Um, my other travel tripod has spinning collars, so they don't take up the space, but they also take longer to open, thanks. So this, this is a little Mi Photo travel guy. I think I've shown you this one before as part of my live broadcasting from the iPhone rig with the iPhone holder that I keep in there. But this one, same kind of idea, these well, should be loose, I don't know why it was tight, but those should be loose. So when I open it, they're just ready to go. And when I collapse it, I don't have to tighten them up. So there's that. So if you have a tripod like that, then that's something I would advise.
Okay, uh, let's see here. Did I actually get that all back in place? I guess so. Back into here, any extra gadgets, pockets? Nope. Nice and simple. In she goes. I kind of think there might be something I need to pivot just to make it close a little bit tighter. That's that's a little bulgy there, bulgier than I remember it being. But that works. There you go. Oh, let's see here. <laughs> you know, it's funny. That other, the Mi photo has the exact same oddity to it. This strap is incredibly short. I can shorten it, but I can't lengthen this anymore. So I can shorten this all the way to what basically makes it into a handle. Okay, so I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. But at its longest, it is just a bit on the oddly short side. The other one's exactly the same. Maybe I'm missing the point. But like, if I want to put this over my shoulder, like that's that's it's not comfortable. It's a little bit too tight. I would like, and if I was any bigger, there's no way I'd be able to get that on. I mean, clearly, you know, shoulder fine. But if you're carrying a lot of gear, you want to go across. So I don't know why that's so short. Such a short strap. But there you go. The bag is not the most attractive bag in the world. Like it's very Italian. It's like Italian racing stripes. I feel like we're going to go out and play football with this. It's, it looks like a race car, yeah. <laughs> and it says Manfrotto. That's something I'm never a fan of. And obviously, companies want to brand and badge their stuff. I don't like advertising what I'm carrying around. So I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to cover this over. I might carry it in a different bag. That one, the Mi Photo, is a bit more subtle with a little tiny Mi Photo badge. Uh, and most people don't know what Photo is, but Manfrotto, everybody knows. And everybody, anybody who knows anything about photography is going to go, ooh, that's a nice tripod. That's the one that will steal when his back is turned. So, you know, but you can find a different bag if that's, a, that's an issue. Um, what, I wanted to give you the weight. Let's see if it's on here. Um, ultra compact and lightweight, only 1.78 kilos or 3.92 pounds. So under four pounds, 15.7 uh, inches or 47 centimeter, 40 centimeters when folded. And see if it says a max weight on here anywhere. It uh, doesn't, but I'm pretty sure it was eight pounds. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, 8.8 .8 pounds, four kilos. So there you go. That's a lot. That's a lot of camera. So that's it. See, any other questions? It needs a belt clip, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> hmm. Sean says it needs a belt clip. Okay, so I'll, I'll put this. Maybe that's what this is for. I should tighten it up and hick it over my belt. No, that's okay. Thanks. All right, guys, thanks a bunch for tuning in for today's live Photo Justice Photo Moment. Uh, as always, you can tune in live at 9.30 a.m. Pacific at facebook.com slash photojoseph. And if you missed any of them, head over to my YouTube page. Just uh, search for Photo Joseph or uh, Photo Moment, and you'll find them on the YouTube page. My YouTube page is Jay Lenashke, and I can't change it to Photo Joseph, which is super annoying, but I've already got all my stuff on there. So what are you going to do? Uh, that is it. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye link to it under the uh, in the notes on here but this thing is made for moving furniture and the key here is it's got this hole in here and the hole is perfect for the spike on the bottom of your tripod like not all tripod legs have spikes on them some of them do they'll have a little rubber foot that you can screw up so that the um, the spike gets revealed and that's for